Ready? Okay. Um, then welcome to the next talk. Um, I just have the short name here for Bitsum and Free, but there's a Furu Holman. Yeah, that's um, my last name. Okay, so we don't have it until now, but now we know yeah. it for the next time. Um, so thanks for coming. Um, the the yeah, you're talking about data replication. I'm, I'm really happy because it it's, it sounds a big field. Yeah, that's <laughs> I, 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 it's a big field, and and I'm a little bit worried because no, could be good for someone, probably not good for other than. I see not many people. Please stop me, ask me question. No, is this not enough uh, deep or is <laughs> too deep or anyway? So we we'll think we can make a more interaction section. Okay, perfect. We look forward to it. Then it's your stage. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, okay. Um, can I ask you why you are interested in data replication in this session? Quite to have any idea what is the topic that you want to know. Just for fun. Yeah, that, that is fun. That's, I have to say that is fun. Yeah. There are many situations with more than one node, and you need to replicate the data across all the nodes, I believe. Yeah. Well, um, this session is divided mainly in two big um, parts. The first part is an introduction and probably a little bit boring with some theorem, some common pattern, some algorithm and so on. And after that, when we will know uh, the algorithm, we will try to understand how it works in different implementation like file system, database, NoSQL and some common tools. Data replication, we already a little bit uh, anticipate is a big topic. In the past, it was mainly connected to snapshot or backup, disaster recovery. But today, uh, it's more connected to cloud computing, scalability, high ability, high performance, distribution around the world. Because today, you can have one data center everywhere. You can buy, it's quite a low price, some VM somewhere. First example is Amazon, and you can have one, one VM in Sydney, one VM in Singapore, one in Sao Paulo, or no, Santa Clara, and so on. But, well, the world is quite well connected. If you check the, uh, the wire, uh, or undersea wire, and so on, there are a lot of connections around the world, but, Probably not many people know that you need at least 200 milliseconds between Sydney and Santa Clara, or 250 milliseconds from London to uh, Singapore, or and so on and so on. That seems very small amount of time. We're talking about milliseconds, but probably you already know much better than me the latency on a single packet is a really killer application, or kill your application. Because we can see when you arrive to 200 milliseconds, your response time is closed out to one, two, three seconds, depend on the size. That means the bandwidth is not enough. The bandwidth is important. The bandwidth is very important in the local data center. But when you have more than one data center, you have to fight with the latency. Some other measure to you know, understand the difference that you have in memory and network. You know, that in memory you talk about microsecond. In network you talk about millisecond. Then any operation, any transaction in memory is you no know, one thousand faster than any other solution. And for the latency in two thousand and nine, I believe. Um, Brewers define a CAP theorem. Define three main areas of interest you not know, everyone wants, no availability, partition tolerance, and consistency. And they said it's not possible to have all together if you, if you use a network mainly. If you don't use a network and you have a single installation, well, in the past 20 years ago, that was quite famous, the tandem system with double hardware or triple hardware. 
No, that's, that's high availability inside of the hardware. But if you don't have more than hardware, you don't have availability. But if you want availability, you need some connection. That means you need some, you introduce some latency. Then 2012, this theorem was a little bit reviewed, but the concept remained the same. To now, today, we talk that you can have the three elements together in the same time. You can decide time by time, no, time, time by time, what you want. Uh, to break a little bit the, the paradigm uh, of ACID, no, uh, the database, you know, to have the consistent and so on, we have seen the, the NoSQL generated a new topic, the base, you no, know, base availability, soft state, and eventual consistency. But mainly, uh, the main problem that you have today, that client can see different stuff in the same time. And it's quite funny, they decide ACE, ACE and B is you no know, like in the chemistry, you no, know, that you have complete two opposite view, or also two opposite reaction. The CAP theorem, what you want to use, you no, know, if you want to have more availability or consistency or partition resistance, is not a technical problem. It's a mainly a business decision. You have to decide and to you know, uh, talk with your business or your stakeholder to be agreed, because it a, has a big impact on the business. Now we will start a little bit with some formula, and, uh, but yeah, don't worry. We have seen we can divide the problem in more or less four elements, data placement, data consistency, system coordination, and data, and data transmission. This is more or less the, the four main topics in data replication. First of all, we have seen latency. If you want to transfer with a single piece in a long distance, but also in a local network, we take a lot of time because TCP and so on and so on. That the first topic is to divide your content, your block, your data, depends or, or no, that you can base on the bytes, can base on the feature, can base on, on the topics, you, up to you. But you have to divide. If you divide, you can use multi stream, that means parallel operation, and also the multi core. Otherwise, you have only a single operation. When you have divided your, ha your, your component or your information in, in small elements, you have to decide how you want to deploy, how you want to place. Mainly, there are three topics today. One is centralized, that you have someone that knows where is all the pieces of your information. Or completely de decentralized, that you have some mathematical formula that is able to look up for you or give you the information where to pick up the information, where is the information based on the content we will see. There is also today um, a cross on, on the two that is more distributed. No, that's not, not uh, try to make more advantage on, on the two, the previous two elements. Today, the more used or more you can find everywhere, I have to say, is a placement by, by hash, made hashing. That seems complicated. No, that's, if you see that, it seems that is written by in another language. But the concept is extremely simple. You have your data, you divide your data, you made the hash, the hash that you want, and after that, you have to define, most of the case, virtual node. The virtual node is a range of the key. Now, if you use, for example, SSH1, you have 161, I believe, bit that you can create a range of key. You divide this space in element. You can call this element vnode or as you want, and assign this, no this V node to a real node, a real server. And immediately you have distributed your data. 
Another important that to visualize, you can put the key in a ring, and then you can understand how it works. That's quite simple. And this approach is used mainly in all NoSQL, but also in the cluster and replication. Uh, there are some theories, some, some other algorithms that are based on the space evaluation, are multidimensional, but at the moment is not so used. But it is quite interesting. Okay, now we have found how to distribute the element. The second point is how to make the replication. No, we found that to send one piece in one node, that is not replication, this is only placement. How can do quite easily and without problem? Mainly today, we use two, you can find two approach. One approach, very simple, to send the key that is in your range to other two elements, other two nodes that are close to you. That's very simple. You receive the key, and you send this, you receive the piece of data, and you send to the element. The next two, the previous, and the next, as you want. That means you have, and for this reason, most of the time you see the replication is based by three. Well, also for other reasons. Uh, the second uh, approach is to create on, on, on the node level a small cluster of three elements. That in this case means you need uh, coordination, election, and many other stuff. The first one that I said is quite simple. The second is a little bit more complicated, but it's faster to detect the failure. Any question? Simple, I believe. No? Yes? No? That that's is more simple. And we have seen in NoSQL, or anyway, the new approach is to reduce the consistency. To avoid the consistency, or well, to introduce the consistency when you need, uh, today we are more or less six way to uh, make something similar to uh, Paxos, or anyway, the commit that we have in the database. This is the last one. It's more or less what happened in the database. No, you lock everything, you write everything, and you unlock. How you can re reproduce this uh, situation if you don't have any locking system? Uh, you can write and read more than one. Well, that means a simple example is read uh, all write quorum. If you have a four nodes and you write and you write, uh, you start to write that you have to write on all the nodes. But you read always three times. You are, you know that if it's the data is there or not. That is a simple approach that is used to create a kind of guarantee. Or otherwise, you can create a quorum, and there are some some other approach. Ba basically, you start from the first picture on the top that you can recognize immediately that is more or less what happened like in the MySQL master slave that you start to write, but the information probably is still not on, on the slave. If you increase the number of the read on the slave level, you can create like a read all, write ones. Or write all, depends. But what I want to say is that there are some techniques that you can uh, use to make a, a simulation of the commit when you strictly need, when it's strictly needed, when you want to be completely sure that the data is uh, is committed and is stored on the device. That's any question. I have to explain a little bit more. No, for this reason, it was nice to the whiteboard. <laughs> Uh, we have said, no, um, we have, in some cases, more cluster, and we need a coordination. Today, we can see two main protocols. One is the Paxos, that uh, you can find implementation everywhere, and is an election system. It's a consensus and election system. Quite, uh, I don't want to say quite simple, because it's not so simple, but it's quite clear. 
Today, also from, from NoSQL or no emergent technology, we have epidemic, while well, sometimes you can find gossip. The epic name uh, protocol is on an idea like the virus, no, to contact one, uh, one other node and exchange information. It's a kind of build a routing table. No, you exchange information with another node, and you, after a couple of interactions, all the node in the, uh, in, the, in the cluster has the same information. You can see that, well, it's based on log n, and you can see, you know, after a couple of interactions, all the elements in the cluster have the same information. Also, in this case, you can find many types of implementation, but yeah, in the beginning, it seems strange, but it works. And uh, in most of the cases, more, more faster than consensus that need all the parts are, are <laughs> agree with a specific value and collect information pro no, and, and uh, elect a new master. The consensus protocol is used mainly in the database for commit two phase commit. The epidemic protocol is more used for failure detection. On the transmission protocol, like well, if you know how the cell is divided itself or reproduces cell, you can know there is some phases. And one of the first phases is to put some order inside. Also, the replication uh, is quite good to, first of all, reorder, because sometimes the data is... You have two operations on the same block or two operations on the same data, data information that doesn't make sense to transmit if you have a buffer, but that means you are not synchronous. You have also compressed and, and more data, that means a better compression. And you have also transmit, you can transmit by difference that doesn't, if you have the data and, and only a small part is changed, you don't have to transmit all the data. But that means you have to keep the hash of each single element. But the hash of each single element, in most of the case, if you use a uh, hash placement, you have because it's a hash base, and the hash could be the content that, uh, of your element. That you have all the hash, you can compare the hash, and transmit on the block that this changed. That is quite simple and obviously quite fast. There is also some other optimization, like uh, Merkle tree. Merkle tree uh, is a um, 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 way to rebuild a um, um, copy that is broken or went offline. It's always based on the hash. With the hash, you can save a lot of time. And as we know, the latency kills you know, the transmission. That less data, less latency, mainly on the real data. There are many other things, like locking, with distributed locking, multi-versioning, and so on. But I decide to uh, skip, skip this part. Okay, now we, ha we know more or less how it works, the uh, replication. We can see the tree element, the capturum, and we can see the availability consistency is mainly based on uh, RMD BMS by database, relation database. We have consistency and partitioning, tolerance, we can have MongoDB, HBase, and through availability and partition tolerance, we have RIA, Cassandra, and so on. This is mainly the implementation based on the algorithm that we have seen. <coughs> Sorry. Um, we can also divide no, the content. Uh, that's another important topic. I want to say doesn't exist the perfect replication system. The replication system is made based on the content that you have. And Obviously, if you have to replicate block or file, probably the best solution is a distributed file system. Because probably you don't want to lose data, or you don't want the user to see different data, and so on. Or you don't want uh, yeah, overlapping or inconsistent state. If you have information what, that you can well structure, probably you want a database. For most of the other things, document, blocks, section, properties, or content that doesn't change very well, you can probably want to move to NoSQL. And now I will start to see a little bit the implementation. The first is distributed file system. That is a strange 
is a strange animal because seem old, but at the same time, we have a file system everywhere. There are tons of file systems, distributed file systems. There are some, someone are more famous, while well, some much CTDB is not really a file system, and also DRDB is not a real file system, but you can find on the internet a lot of solution, open source base, and many other solution proprietary base, and quite expensive. The main advantage of file system is a file system that everyone read and write file. Then you can automate operation through a bash to Java and whatever you want. And you don't have to care about the localization of your data. You read and write. Most of this file system has a single unit path. Then the path is the same on all nodes. The disadvantage is most of the case they have problem on scalability or availability depends on the implementation or also partition tolerance. That depends if the file system was designed to be fast or to be more consistent and so on. The first, and probably you know very well, is DRDB. DRDB is a block replication, doesn't have a high scalability, it's very good, very fast, but you is more oriented on a single service or you no know, to help the database to scale and high availability. The other big advantage of DRDB is to make a remote copy, and that probably is a good solution for a disaster recovery site. But no scalability. You make a replication of single disk. It's like to have an hardware that may, is able to make a RAID one. More interesting, I think this morning you have seen the Ceph. Today, the Ceph is de facto the storage for cloud, for uh, virtualization system. It's very well designed. Is um, yeah, use some technique placement like based on hash. Is consistent, has a strong consistent, but also now start to move on weak consistent to, to afford problem on geo replication or long distance connection and so on. And we can see that has, as I said, hash base has a rough rough is a simplified Paxos uh, protocol to make an election and coordination and commit and yeah. Probably you, you know better because you have seen this morning. And they start to deploy, like in CERN, was deployed with three petabytes of data. And if I remember, there are close to 8,000 VM running there. They start to think to replace completely also for collect the data of the experiment because now is the back end as i said is de facto is the back end of of um, openstack and so on but they start to thinking to migrate also other other projects that are more and more uh, has more and more data i believe 30 or more petabyte of data one of the, the implementation that's quite, no, you can understand that you can use uh, Ceph as a replication system to work directly to RADOS on OSD level is, is done by Okeanos, is an um, open uh, virtualization provider. They have set up a solution and they use uh, Ceph or mainly OSD to make the snapshot replication of the MI and start up. And they, at the moment, has a good success. You can see they have more than 5,000 users, and they started more than 250,000 VM. Any question on the file system you want? Another, another solution that is not in the slide is uh, OpenFS that is more related on content base and cache, cache on the client side. Now is they restarted to develop. They are quite interesting development. And uh, the, the big advantage is the cache side on the client. Then reduce the transmission based on the persistent cache that you have and the notification, the callback. You work on your local data, and if someone makes the change, you receive a notification. That's to avoid you no know, data transfer or pooling and so on. But keep the consistent of the data. 
That's quite interesting. Uh, they have also a read-only copy. This is more a snapshot that you can duplicate volume on, on, uh, on the fly or re-elect one volume master to, to another VM. No question? OK. Well, prob probably today, one of the things that doesn't skate at all is the database. Well, uh, the database has a big constraint, have to be consistent, then it's quite difficult to scale. If you m have done some simulation on, for example, Postgres to sync replication with a hot standby, probably you have seen that the performance immediately is cut by 50% or more for the network latency, for receive their knowledge on the other side. Then, uh, if you want to be consistent, you don't have solution at the moment. It, it's not possible, or, you, or better, it's not possible to have a good scalability and to read the same data everywhere. Um, that that's means you can use, in most of the case, many nodes on the master level. That means you can scale if you want to keep, you, you don't scale very well if you want to keep the consistent of the data. And mainly the high availability is based on two nodes because you have problem. The two main software, well, the two main databases that you have today uh, on the market are yeah, MySQL or MariaDB, that probably in the future will be more MariaDB and, and, and Postgres. They use two different approach because MySQL is more asynchronous on the replication that you can connect a lot of slave. And this is a big advantage because you scale, but as I said, you don't have any insurance, you don't have any guarantee that the slave is up to date. In the, in the I think a couple of years ago, they introduced a sync uh, replication, but pay attention, a sync means that one of the slave send a knowledge, not all the slave. A uh, complete different story for Postgres, you can use the synchronous, but as I said, you kill completely the, the, the uh, performance. That seems no solution. Well, you can use some external tool, like Tungsten, to make the replication that increase a lot of the condition. Or, I didn't see many installation, MySQL cluster, uh, that's his main memory base. No, you have a lot of limitation, but it's multi-master. And I've seen some installation with more than one cluster connected in a ring in a different data center. The main topic is you can write some content and read to another way. No, you use the MySQL. I've seen someone that tried to use the database as a bus of communication to propagate the information across the data center. For all these problems, no, they started, the, the, um, most of the people try to start uh, or to try to find an alternative. And mainly we know these alternatives like NoSQL, but yeah, each alternative has a specific range, a specific topic to, to, to solve. And well, probably you can find everywhere, no, you have key base or column store, or document-oriented, or graph-oriented. Because if you do one single thing, you can do these things very, very well. And in the, on the performance side, we have seen quite incredible things. For example, the, um, a couple of, I think, la last year, the VoltDB was able to reach one million transactions per second. But obviously, that is simple if you keep in memory. We have seen the memory is one microsecond. But anyway, that that's, is a great number. Also, Redis, and that today Redis has a multi-master implementation, is still beta. But also, Redis is able to handle uh, one, 1,200 transaction with 60,000 clients. That's, you, you can understand immediately why most of the people start to use NoSQL, because this number probably you are not able to handle in the database, but obviously it's a simple operation, get, put a single data. And yeah, th that there is a Cassandra, React, and so on. 
I will talk a little bit on React because, well, I like, um, but I think it's a more example for what we have seen. Uh, uh, React, like Cassandra, is, more, uh, is inspired by DynamoDB and is based on hash with the ring and has a geo replication that's quite interesting. And as I said, you can define when you write the data the consistent, mo consistent model that you want. If you want to write three replication and want that the node that wrote, the proxy that wrote for you, return only when three was written and two is read to no, cl close the connection or the commit. Then, for example, in this way, you can, for a session, to use one read and one write, but for billing data, you can use three write and three read. Not to want to be completely sure that the data is there, or, or otherwise you make a fault. That is nice because you can define your you know, level of security that you want from the data for the persistence of the data. Yes. You can speci specify for a single key. It's not, it's not a session level or, no, you can say, okay, put this value, but I want the security of three element. And um, I have, yeah, that's me only. And that's, yes, this is something, no, that's both, no, we can see in both direction, the database now try to use as a backend no SQL for some operation, but we see also no SQL try to be a little bit more consistent. And as I said, now the model of the cap, okay, you can have the three elements together, but I can design time by time, well, when I made the operation, which I want to use. What I want to be more consistent, that I can be slower. I want to be faster. And yeah, today there is also another trend, but without many success, probably, I don't know, it makes sense build a file system on the top on, on OSQL. There is, yes, two main approach. One fuser that is low and in most of the case not well maintained. And on the other hand, export the S3 interface, compatible interface like Amazon S3. And this, because also in this case S3 is more or less de facto the interface of the storage or the object storage. I've seen on, on, on React, React has a specific uh, application uh, called CS. With three nodes, you are able to run close to 100 megabytes per second. And yeah, the advantage you can you know, store the node where you want in different data center and not in different regions. Different regions are always a little bit uh, um, a pain. Also, Ceph sometimes, you no. Know, uh, in case of self, sometimes it's nice to use the, 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 the pool cache you know, and use the weak consistent, otherwise it's too slow. Um, yeah, some, some, you can find a lot of uh, implementation example. I pick up one of Voga, uh, they have 50 million keys. They have, uh, yeah, 50 kilo, well, 50,000 new per day, and we have 10 million per day of update. And yes, they don't have so much, but they have 200,000 requests per minute. Something similar is, is, was made by New York Times. They decide to use Cassandra. Mainly they decide because the support of multi-region is free. In the React, the multi-region you have to pay. And they use the Cassandra kind of a bus to push the information to mobile customer if there is no new news and so on. And they have two main installations, one Europe and one in, in uh, US, based on Amazon region. And you can find some other details on the FOSNAM of February of this year. Uh, what I want to say, OK. Sometimes uh, we have seen that you have specialized, specialized topic, drive by specialized software, then 
in many cases, you have more than one solution, or better, you have to put more than one solution together. And that means layer. Well, you have to pay attention about that, because yes, you reduce a lot of number of the requests, then probably you can use less VM, because you each layer intercept and has a hit ratio and so on. But on the other hand, you increase the latency. If you are a web-oriented uh, application, no, that's quite good. If you are more read-only, it's quite good. Uh, if you are read-write, you have probably to find some shortcut to go directly to the region and so on. Or, yeah, that's you no. Know, some example is, I've, I don't know if you ch see eBay. No, that's eBay. Uh, I'm, I don't remember if until five minutes you have kind of static page or is a refresh every 30 seconds or every minute. But when you are close, below to five minutes is, is updated and, and, and the refresh of the page, you are redirect probably on the node that ha is, has the master of the information. That's the main topic is uh, you have to be close to computation and, and computation, comp <laughs> calculation and um, yeah, try to move the master more close where the activity, right activity happen. Because, well, it could be the read is not important, but the write and read, or, yeah, the write could be more important. There is some algorithm on, on the locking and, and uh, election that can move the, the master of the information. <coughs> if you want, you can build uh, your replication system. It's not complicated, but, well, I, I'm not sure is is really needed. And we have seen that you can use uh, NoSQL to do that, to replicate some information across the data center. You can use file system. And yes, everything works quite well. <laughs> that I've seen most of the people use that. You all really need real-time data. If you don't, probably are seeing uh, there is some improvement. I've seen some improvement around that is ab are able to increase the number of the thread, use more cores, and so on. Uh, sometimes it's difficult to understand what is replication, what is caching. And sometimes you need a cache. And there are some specific products for that. We didn't talk about varnish, but well, it could be a perfect solution. You have to analyze the life of your data, your TTL. I've seen in the past, uh, we, I have a, a million of requests per day, and also for the content that I have to keep alive for one minute with million of requests, you save a lot of time. You save at least 20% of the request across the world. But, okay, if you want, what I can tell you are, okay, split in pieces. I think this is quite simple. And track the version. In this way, you can tr uh, transfer only what you need on what is changed. And transfer only when you need. Sometimes, well, sometimes it's good to prefetch. Depends on the load that you have. If you have a spike load that retrieve most of the time, the, ser the same region of data probably is much better to make a, pref a prefetch or pre-warming, but otherwise wait the request. If you are able to use notification, for sure it's much better to invalidate the cache or to notify the change on the data that is replicated somewhere. Move the data as close as possible to computation. No, that means you reduce the latency to retrieve the data for the computation purpose. Move also the master more close on, on, on the user or the, the who start to use the information. A small trick uh, sometimes is to split the, the counter or the, or the data. For example, in, in some cases, if you have some counter and you can split the counter, that speed up the write because the application can choose one of the counter that you reduce the deadlock or anyway the, the mutex for this information will be you will have a slow read because you have to read all all the counters but 
And if you have applications that are more write-oriented, that gives you a very high, uh, big advantage. If you are working the HTTP, don't forget the e -tag and last modify. That's if you use Akamai and so on, they use a lot. And you can make uh, some, some other tricks, some prediction. For example, if you have a content that have one minute of TTL, and you receive in the last 10 seconds of the TTL a request for this content, probably you can ask to the backend through the e tag or last modify if it's changed and make a re and put for another minute. Because you are so close that perhaps in the next minute some other will be required this content. Also, there are, yeah, that's, that's, that's this, um, a small trick to reduce the traffic and try to predict if the content is useful or not and if you have to keep in in the cache. Well, uh, as I said, if you want to write, I wrote a um, small file system based on most of the things that I said, and it's funny. No, I have to say that it's very funny and it's very nice. You challenge with a lot of problems, especially way when you have to re make replication between the two sides of the world. I divide the problem and, well, most of the, 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 the um, topics are, was, were covered by the, the, this talk. In five elements, divide uh, the data from the metadata, try to keep in separate elements, separate connection, parallel operation, keep track of, of everything, make compression, reduce the, the transmission, and so on and so on. That you can download somewhere. And part of the rest of us, I probably in a couple of months, uh, I have also a small uh, block data replication on multiple nodes. Because, yes, uh, there are a lot of tools, but a simple, a simple tool that you put a block of data and this is spread around doesn't exist. Um, for me, it was useful, then I wrote that and will be open source quite soon. But you can do the same things. Um, the main concept was, okay, hash content, hash base, the, 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 the placement. Uh, I use 0MQ for the transmission protocol. That means you have to you reduce the, the effort to write your protocol and the, the handle all the connection. I use the Gussie protocol to make the election of the node for the replication and or better to detect the node and also in this case you can decide how many elements you want to write or read. That's this is the last that is not mine, but I believe it's quite true. And any question? Just one regarding this NoSQL database is I was wondering how how do you back up and restore such distributed systems consi in a consistent manner? Yeah, this is one of the, the problem. Um, for example, in React, you have um, the, the region has two, uh, two ways to work. One is con continuously and one in a certain way is uh, create a snapshot. But yes, uh, sometimes it's a problem to create. Uh, some MySQL has uh, a versioning. Then you can freeze to the versioning. No, you have a version of the object. But yeah, that's, that's mainly one of the topics. That's one on long storage retention problem. But yeah, there are depends of, uh, also in this case, depends of the solution. Each element has different solution and uh, if you have a versioning uh, no you well have, you create a snapshot and so on uh, others um, create the snapshot of the metadata where you have the hash that's that's in in some cases important to have the metadata database dumped because the data is, is on the node and stay for quite a while and from the data, metadata information, you can retrieve and create the DAMP. Others, yes, made the DAMP for each node, 
but yeah, the consistency of the data is, is a problem. Yeah, the version is mainly is multi-version and so on. Uh, should be the best solution, but depends depends of the um, of the database of NoSQL. Someone someone doesn't have any solution.